Not the fucking music. Well, hello there, Pumpers. How are you all doing on this great, sunny, well, wherever you are, sunny day? If it's gloomy, how are you on this gloomy day? If it's shitty, how are you on this shitty day? Well, whatever. How are you all? Thank you so much for tuning in to yet another episode of Up and Pumps with me, Robert DeMarco. Um, usually it's cooking Up and Pumps with Robert DeMarco, but I'm not cooking today. I'm coming back by popular demand to give you more of some story time yay um so i'm not cooking shit today um i am coming to you all to tell you based on the title of this story that one time when i died yes 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 this is probably um the first time i really ever really talked about the details of my accident publicly if you will um certain people know some of it but I'll just tell you as much as I know, which based on what was told to me and what I can remember. Um, but it's about that time when I died and it is regarding um, a car, very, very serious car accident that I had in seven, or I'm sorry, in July of 2014, July 15th, 2014, 7, 15, 14, okay? So anyway, but before we get into that, I usually introduce my supporting cast, which is usually my pump, because this show is called Up and Pumps, and I am surrounded by all my girls, or some of my girls, not all my girls, but some of my girls. I got on an old friend. Um, this was a very, to me, a very solemn shoe. So I think that this is, because this is a solemn story and a serious story, um, I'm going to wear solemn, you know, nice nice shoe or what the fuck ever so anyway let's get to it so if you are a first time pumper or viewer or watcher or whatever um thank you so much for tuning in to my show um i am a very real person this is what i do i usually cook but i'm not cooking shit today but sit back and relax and enjoy i'm just me i'm just my real person i don't have time for none of the bullshit okay if you are a diehard pumper and you have been uh, pumping with me since the Potato Alfredo video. Thank you so much for tuning in again and welcome, welcome, welcome back, baby. I love you and I miss you. So anyway, um, today's topic and story is about that one time that I died. Um, yeah, and when I say died, it was more ways than one, literally, literally and figuratively. Um, mentally, emotionally, all that kind of stuff. So, um, back on July 14th, I'm sorry, July 15th of 2014, I um, suffered a very, very serious accident on my way to work. I brought some snacks, some chili Fritos. Gotta have snacks for story time. Some motherfucking strawberry sour patches. If y'all have never had these, get you some of these. They in the shape of little strawberries or whatever. They real good. Let me get these open because I don't want to be rattling with no packages or whatever. And some Boston motherfucking baked beans, bitch. Not from Boston, but these bitches is good. Anyway, so. Sorry. At the time of this, during, uh, around around that time, July of 2014, I was going through a very, 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 very transitional time of my life. Um, my whole family, me, Wendell, and Ares, pretty much, were going through some stuff, a lot of stuff. And that is a whole nother video, a whole nother motherfucking story time, and a whole nother book. But I will go there with you all within soon time when I'm ready to share that part. But, so... I um, came home from work on this particular day, on July the 14th. I came home from work, and I kept on saying all day when I would call window or would talk to window, I kept on saying, I want to watch the Son of God 
I really want to watch The Son of God. So I went home. Um, I, it was a movie, The Son of God, if you guys haven't heard of it. But I went home and did all I needed to do and then got in the bed and put on the movie The Son of God. I do not know what the, why I wanted to see this movie so much. What, you know, whatever. But everything happened for a reason. So there we go. So anyway, I... Wanted to watch this Son of God movie. I went home and I watched it. I finally got a chance to finish it. You know, after being stopped multiple motherfucking times to help with all kinds of different things. But I finally got a chance to finish watching it. And so, I, um, get up, take my shower. I kept on saying I got a meeting in the morning. I went to bed. I woke up the next morning. And I'm, so, I got up in enough time to make sure that I got myself together and that was that. So I reminded Window. Window said, "You up early? You leaving early?" I said, oh, "Yeah, I do have. I have an eight thirty meeting this morning." Um, so my mind is, I got a meeting this morning. I got my stuff together. You know, going on with your life like it's like it's nothing. I go outside, get in the car. Every single morning on my way to work, I listen to this one song. Um, <laughs> that get my mind right for the day that I was getting ready to have. Let me see if I can uh get it for you and um you know how sometimes you have to have music that'll get you in the mood to drive or deal with the, the fucked up traffic um or deal with the people that you about to deal with at work this was my song here we go i'm gonna play just a little bit for y'all but i would get in the car turn this bitch up on blast I'm sorry, I don't mean to say bitch on, on the gospel song, but you know, you know anyway, what I mean on my heart. Turn so, it on blast. Whip around, come off the driveway, and go on by my way. So it was a song basically, Rejoice With Me by Faith Evans and Bobby Jones, okay? So that was my song that got me to going every day. So. I pull out the driveway, and I'm driving up the the side street to go up to the main street 153 highway 153 so i left the house at about 720 i left at 720 um because i knew that if i left right at 730 i would get to work uh, you know it wouldn't be right so fuck that so anyway i left to work i left work left for work at about 720 it took me about to 725 to get up to highway 153 so my song is blasting i got it i got the sunroof open i'm you know Feeling myself, I'm getting ready to go to work, I'm going to knock this day out, make this money, do whatever I got to do. So I'm sitting there at the stoplight waiting to make a left turn onto 153. So you know you have to be in the middle lane um, to get ready to make a left turn off of, from a side street. So I'm in the middle lane and the it was a, a light, red, you know, green, orange, yellow-ish or whatever. And... I go, I get my signal, green light, to go ahead and turn left. So I pull out into 153. What I do remember is being in the car and reaching over, trying to take my seatbelt off. And I remember saying, I'm about to whoop this bitch ass. I'm about to whoop this bitch ass. And I don't know what it was, but I was trying to take my seatbelt off because I wasn't ready to go whoop somebody's ass. So, that's all I remember from that moment. Okay? Fast forward again. Windows waking me up in the hospital. Robert. Robert. I need your bank. What's your pot? What's your um your card code? What's the code on your card? I need to get some money out for gas. And I'm like, what? My card? You don't need my damn card number. What is you doing? And I'm ta I'm talking in my sleep. You know, you don't need my card. He's like, yes, I do, Robert. What is your code? I need to get some money out the bank. What is your card? And so I wake up and said, I said the code or whatever. So he did what he had to do, and then he came back. And I remember him, me being kind of awake or whatever, and he said, Robert, you are in the hospital. You had an accident two days ago. 
and you in the hospital. You it's bad. It was bad, pretty bad. And I'm like, what? Are you serious? And I'm still laying there. I'm like, what? Are you serious? And he's like, yeah. Get up. Let me show you. And so I get up to try to get out the bed, and I could barely walk. Um, and then he took me over to a mirror and was like, see. And I just broke down crying. I just broke down. I just didn't know what, how to, I, the feeling that I felt at that time, I just broke down crying. So I had been told at that time that I had been in the hospital. I had to have two emergency surgeries on my aorta. I have a uh, scar from my uh, growing area all the way up to the middle of my chest because they had to go in and repair my aorta. I had a my diaphragm exploded. I probably was singing this motherfucking song and was on a high note and the bitch hit me or whatever. <laughs> and everything just went haywire. So my diaphragm exploded. My pelvis was broken in three different areas. Um, and I had a close, a brain bleed. So the brain bleed was, uh, it repaired itself. Um, I lost vision in my right eye. Um, and so the brain, that was due to the, the head injury because the, if somebody hits you on the driver's side, everything just bounces over and that was, you know, I had a brain injury. So close head brain injury, brain bleed. Um, they said I suffered a stroke, two strokes um, at the time, of course, because of the brain bleed and, and the vessels in your, in your head. Um, I had about, I want to say, a month or two of physical therapy so that my walking could, you know, I can be prepared to be a better walker with a pelvic, if it's broken you can't move, you can't rock forward, you can't do nothing, so you know, you have to have physical therapy for that shit, so those are the details of the actual accident, but when I say I died okay, being on life support for two days um I think that you pretty much are being supported by life, so there's a point in there where you could have died, or you could have lost a little bit of whatever. Um, but I also meant that um, I, when I came to and and got my mind and my wits back, I was a different person. Um, and I say that I was more alert spiritually. I would pick up on stuff. I started reading. Uh, all kind of, I mean, I, I had become a different person and I noticed things about the universe and, you know, it was like really scary to me, um, to the point where I started, um, foreseeing stuff. And I mean, I really thought that I was either in heaven or something because the feeling that you get when those things happen is like, wow. So I'm still mentally was fucked up at this point. So I didn't know whether to believe what I was hearing and feeling and seeing or to think that I was probably permanently fucked up, but I wasn't. So um, when I say that I died, that time I died, yeah, I believe I did in all kinds of ways and some of it for the good um, because it woke me the fuck up. Um, we have lives that are entirely too short nowadays. Um, certain areas in, in our country, you can't even walk down the street without being afraid of robbery or um, murder or rape or whatever. Kids being abducted, women disappearing and shit. It's just life is too short. So when I had that moment where my life could have been gone, because like I say, I don't remember anything after me sitting at that stoplight pulling forward. That's what I remember, and I remember me trying to take my seatbelt off. But other than that, as it relates to the actual accident itself, I cannot remember shit. I can't tell you what they, what they was driving. I can't tell you none of that because everything just at that point had, and I hate to say this, but had I died, there w I wouldn't have remembered, and not that I would need to remember, but it, life would have stopped at that stoplight. You understand what I'm saying? And, you, you know, I'm not even speaking on a spiritual level, but think about that. If you wake up tonight or tomorrow and get ready to leave out your house, listening to your your normal songs, doing your normal routine, watching your movies and shit, putting your clothes on like you normally do, and then you wake up in the hospital two days later, what if none of that happened? Your legacy would have left at that motherfucking stoplight or at that intersection had you not did something with your life. Which brings me to the moral of this motherfucking story. 
Life is too motherfucking short and you shouldn't have to die in order to live. Okay? So, understand that if there's anything in this life that you want to do, that you feel like you need to do, baby, please do it. If there's anybody that you need to say something to or that you need to get off your... Do the shit because life is too short. You could be on your way to work <laughs> and on your way out of here. Okay? So... I had to learn that way. I don't want other people to feel like they have to almost die or die or have moments of, away from here uh, when you're not even conscious and shit to learn something or to, to get motivated. Hell, your death could be in you losing a job or it could be in you losing everything that you got in order for you to have to go and understand that all you got is what you got now and that's the time that you have now to do what the fuck you need to do. So I don't want you, don't don't feel like you need to die or go to something as extreme as I did. I just know that I'm a very stubborn motherfucker. I'm a very smart motherfucker. And if I'm, my mind is set on something, I'm going to go towards it. So maybe the God and the universe and everything else feel like it had to knock me the fuck on the other side of the road to shut me the fuck down so I can get on the right path to do what I'm supposed to be doing. Your purpose. After that accident, I, accident, I found out what my purpose was and that was to inspire people. I mean, clear as day, you, you, you begin to realize these things. If you are almost on your way out of here, you haven't lived to do the things that you wanted to do or that your life purposes you to do, you will have a moment like I had. You will sit there and think about all the, had, I mean, if you have the situation that I have, you will have that moment where you're going, everything is going to be, they, you know how they say your life flashed before you the moment you get ready to die? That is very true, but it doesn't happen when you get ready to die. That, that happens when you have come back from you almost dying. Like if you are on a death situation or on life support, yeah, your life's going to flash before you and it's going to be that time when you will figure out what the fuck you should be doing. Hell, I remember, I mean, it's going to flash. I did, I was doing this 10 years ago. This is what I should be doing now. Or I was, I mean, why did I stop doing that? Or I went to school to do this. Why did I not finish that? What can I do to, you, your mind is going to go to all of that. Okay? So, um, I'll give you a prime example before I let you go. And, 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 and that's that. Um, I started a blog probably almost 10 years ago um, called The Real Shoe King and I was in Michigan and I went to I think the Michigan Detroit or Detroit Fashion Week which was downtown at the Whitney and um, I brought a pair of my sister's shoes because I was there as as, as a media uh, representative for my blog speaking and inter interviewing people um, and I that was my first time wearing a pair of heels in public where I felt uh, like I I just felt liberated. That was my first time wearing a pair of heels, and it was actually similar to these that my sister had. They were brown. But um, I said it to say is, here it is 10 years later, and I'm laying in a bed with all my girls, with, 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 with heels and stuff, back full circle with what was, going, what was making me happy. I would come home and get on that blog. I would search shoes and send them out, and it was just, that was what was making me happy at the time, and now this is what's making me happy. So, You'll still be, you'll go full circle. Um, sometimes you'll have to be taken to the extreme to get back to where the fuck you're supposed to be. But I had to learn something from that experience too about inspiration because what, I feel, what I've learned from this experience is that I inspire people and I, I'm grateful to be that one who is inspired. And I am inspired by me being inspiring to people. Um, you know, some people don't have confidence to walk around in a pair of heels whether you are a man or a woman. You know, I can't do that. Oh, I'm going, my feet going to hurt. Well, let the motherfuckers hurt, but you look good as hell. You know, or even take it a little deeper. You know, I am a 33-year-old man on the World Wide Web with a pair of heels on laying in my bed. Motherfuckers can say all they can and all they would want to say about me. But listen, I've been through all that. I've been through high school. I've been through people calling me fag and gay and all of that. That's, that, fuck all of that. The fact that I have stepped outside of a comfort zone and doing what I feel like makes me happy Hopefully, it's inspirational to somebody else to say, I don't give a fuck what none of you motherfuckers say. I'm going to do what makes me happy. So, if that means walking around outside with a motherfucking uh, a dozen of donuts uh, hanging out my ass, that's what I want to do. Because that's, what, that's what's making me happy. But please don't do that, baby. Please don't. But anyway, so, I'm going to say it again. 
moral of the story is life is too motherfucking short. Do you um, live the life that you want to live? Find out what your purpose is in life and work it. You know, you can have a job. I have a job. I have a nine to five job that I work every goddamn day faithful. And I love my job. I love because I work with people that I can inspire every day, that I can help. I mean, I'm still living out my passion in all things that I do. Just because you want to do something in the entertainment industry don't mean you can't. You got to be broke. You can find other things that will help you feed your purpose so that when it all culminates, you are a mogul. That's how these moguls get built. Hello. So, I don't mean to be preaching or whatever, but what I'm trying to say is live your motherfucking life because I would hate for you to live what I had to live with, being on uh, goddamn prescription drugs and had to wean myself off of that. My body was going all crazy. I, they gave me, of course, a full prescription, but that, I took that. I was, I, I was sent home from the hospital um, after, I think, eight days in the hospital. And then I immediately, I was off work for two months. I, st I started physical therapy. I took that medication, oxys and shit, for a week. And I didn't like how it was making me feel. People, shit was floating and I was just feeling too motherfucking good. And I said, oh, this is the shit that people be buying out in the motherfucking streets. Not doing that. So I took myself off of that shit after seven days. And I weaned myself off of it because even after seven days, your body would go through all kinds of shit. And I, I, whatever pain I had to deal with, I dealt with it and went to physical therapy, ran on treadmills and shit like that because I'm not, I, you know, I was one thing for me to be almost gone from this motherfucking world. I'm not going to come back and be a motherfucking dope a fiend, a crackhead, pillhead or whatever the fuck. Can't do that. Now, if that's your thing to do, by all means, love you, baby. But I can't do that. So, um, yeah, that was that. So, um, live your life, baby. Do what you got to do. Don't sit there and let nobody else tell you that, oh, you shouldn't do that. No, baby. Whatever you want to do, do it. And do it up in pumps. All right, you all. Thank you so much for listening to my story time. Um, the time I almost died. Please like, share, and subscribe to this video. Hopefully, it'll be inspiring to someone. Please um, share. Uh, let people know that it's a crazy motherfucker on the internet who be sitting up up in pumps, laying in his bed with heels on, cooking with motherfucking heels on, doing all kind of crazy shit. Just a crazy motherfucker. Let them know that he's on the internet and he has videos and shit, or however you wish to say it. Um, I love you to pieces. Thank you so much for supporting me. Um, you know, without you all, I wouldn't have any inspiration to do these videos. Um, so, yeah. I love you. And, um, yeah. Bye-bye. Not bye-bye, but...